Have you, so I'm drinking this new coffee. It's called Death Wish Coffee. It's supposedly the strongest like coffee bean that that's ever been made or something like that. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, what's up guys? We got Mark Logan here. Uh, he's one of the best messenger, messen I never know how to say it, messengers and uh, copywriters that I know. Um, he's helped, uh, uh, well, he's part of running a program uh, that has generated over $100,000 per month, um, helping people generate leads and sales on LinkedIn. And he created all of the um, messaging and copywriting for that. Um, and we're gonna dive into exactly how to nail down your messaging and copy for uh, your business and your programs. And it's super important because that's the basis of you attracting leads into your world. It's your branding, it's your offers, and it's your messaging and copy around that. Um, so I'm super excited for this one. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for being here, dude. Hey, thanks for having me, man. It's awesome to be here. I love it. Um, so guys, if you have questions at any time, drop them down below. Um, hit the heart button, hit the like button. And the more you do that, the more we love your face. I don't make the rules, it's just what happens. Um, and uh, with, uh, uh, I already said it, ask questions at any time. And my first question for you, Mark, um, is when you are starting with a new offer um, and you're creating the messaging around that offer or business, you can pick either one, um, where do you start? So I always try to first, you know, I always try to keep things extremely simple. I think that people make things way too complicated, just in general, and just as entrepreneurs, it's it's easy to get wrapped up in all that stuff. And I always back up and say, okay, well, what's what is that first easy step? And it's just to understand my audience. And I see this everywhere. And you know, we we talk about it as entrepreneurs, like you have to know who you're talking to. You got to know you, you know who your clients are and all that. But what I've found is that people they never go deep enough into who their audience actually is. So they'll like maybe find out what the identity is on the surface, but they never find out the details that actually matter. So like, mm -hmm. can I give an example for you? I think that'll help. Yeah, go ahead. So, so somebody might say, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a business coach. And I say, okay, well, great. Well, that's awesome. So what do you do? And they say, oh, well, I help people grow their business. Mm -hmm. like, okay. well. Yeah, cool. You know, tell me more. Like, how, you know, how? What, what kind of businesses do you help? And they say, oh, well, you know, that's always how it, how it starts. It's like, oh, well, you know, I, I help entrepreneurs and I help, you know, people who, who aren't entrepreneurs sometimes. Maybe they're trying to become entrepreneurs. I, I help people who have you know, like product based businesses and service based businesses and, and, you know, just like a bunch of different kinds of businesses. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, but you see, the, you see the problem here. We all see the problem here, right? It's mm -hmm. you don't have any kind of focus, and you know if you chase two rabbits, you catch no rabbits. <laughs> yeah, it's vague. It's super vague. Yeah, it's super vague, and that's that's the biggest problem. And your messaging can't work if you're going to be super vague about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you advise that people use surveys or like actually hop on the call with like ten people and ask specific questions on the call? What What do you advise? I always prefer the call. The call is always the best because you can just casually be curious and find out more about what the audience is looking for and mm -hmm. what they do and what their challenges are and all that stuff because you know for every level is a different devil right so somebody who you know at the six figure level maybe if we're talking business owners right mm -hmm. six figure level they're going to have a different challenge to people who are at the seven figure level mm -hmm. and on and on from there and you got to find out just from those kind of conversations you know with specificity mm -hmm. what, you know, your strengths and your offer can actually make the biggest difference and impact. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Um, what are those specific questions that you like to ask to really pull out, um, as Jeff would say, the tribal language of your ideal clients? Um, which ones do you really like to hit? So really my favorites are the number one, just open ended questions in general, you know, and that just like listening mm -hmm. intently to like the things they say over and over again. Right. And it's mm -hmm. like, what kind of words they using when they're spontaneously just thinking off the top of their head, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to like specific questions to get a specific answer, I usually just like to ask, you know, what's the what's the impact that you make for your clients? Mm -hmm. 
it's open ended enough, but it talks about the result. So, mm. so now I can see, okay, well, this is how they think about their clients, this is how they think about their audience, and this is the you know the value that they provide. And then from there, I can go into finding out, like, okay, so you know, tell me more about that, and get get a big big data pool of just you know how they think, and mm. that's like everything I need to start really. Nice, love it. Uh, do you use otter.ai? Did <laughs> I just learned about otter like two weeks ago and it <laughs> sounds life changing. <laughs> it's freaking dope. Um, but everybody out there should download it right now. It's free for 600 minutes. Um, but it will transcribe every word that's being said. Actually, I could pull it up on my phone right now and blow people's freaking minds. It's the, it's the future. Um, but I just want to get this out there to everybody. So this is what the app looks like on the inside. And then if you just hit the mic on the bottom, it will literally transcribe everything that I'm saying word for word. And you can go back to it um, at any time on your computer. So if you're doing these types of like uh, uh, target audience research um, uh, interviews, um, then you can go back to that and pull out the words that they're using and, and actually dump it into a system and see what are the most common overlapping words that they used. Um, so that's a little golden nugget for you. And if anybody's doing um, a lot of content creation and finding it hard to find the time to do it, if you, if you uh, this is, I'm gonna share this. If you, yeah. have, if, you have a, a, if you have a tip that solves a problem for your audience, anything that moves the needle forward for what they're trying to do in their life or their business or whatever. You're an expert on that topic. You can rant on that topic, just talking yes. for forever. You could talk all day about so many different things, right? So if you pull out a recording app that can transcribe, especially like that, and just mm -hmm. rant into this app, mm -hmm. then you've got so much content to go on. And <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> Damn, dude, I haven't done it yet, but that's actually a really fucking good idea to just like talk into that bad boy, send it off to a content writer, and then have them either make a blog post out of it or uh, face. God damn it, that's it. automation. Um, mm -hmm. It's otter.ai, so O T T E R dot AI. And it's a, it's a mobile app and it's also on your computer, and you can hook it up to Zoom. Uh, and it will transcribe your calls too. Um, and you get like 600 minutes per month for free. Um, it's a pretty cool app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it right after this call. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get back on track. So um, for this, can we, can we talk about the specific program, what, what the program's called, or stay away from that? Oh, we can, yeah. Okay, cool. So it was a LinkedIn program, right? Yeah, yeah. It's called LinkedIn Executive Advantage. Nice. Um, executive Advantage. Okay. Um, so where did you start there? Like, how did you and your business partners come together to create the messaging and um, uh, and the copy around that program to really, I mean, it takes talent to bring in $100,000 per month. Um, it's not just like you don't get there by accident. Um, really understanding your ideal client is what it comes down to. So what uh, what did you do there? So it's really interesting. So before, let me start at the beginning. Before my partners and I came together, mm -hmm. we were kind of doing our own thing. I, was, I had just launched a program helping people with LinkedIn because that's how I grew my first business organically. Didn't have a website, didn't have testimonials, track record, any of that kind of stuff. Nice. And use my LinkedIn profile, and I was helping attorneys because I, I was an attorney before entrepreneur, and then left okay. let, left that, jumped out of that because it wasn't serving me. It was not where I was supposed to be, and I wanted to start my own business. And the first place that I started was helping other attorneys grow their practice. I saw so many holes in their marketing and how they did things from when I was working there. And mm -hmm. I said, none of this stuff makes any sense. I can help you a lot. And mm -hmm. And I started there and I just started reaching out to them on LinkedIn and that's how I started to grow my business. So eventually I was like, I want to help entrepreneurs. That's really where I get lit up and, and where it's like I shine. So uh, let me see if I can launch a LinkedIn beta program really quickly and see if I can help like 10 people. And mm -hmm. I ended up helping like 20 
and and more people want to get in but i was doing it one-on-one -on -one. i didn't have enough time to yeah keep doing that and like it was a real hustle and i couldn't do it anymore so i said let me switch to like the online model to do this and the timing just kind of worked out because i met my my partner who was doing something similar for financial advisors and we kind of combined our heads and and all of a sudden we said you know what let's dive into linkedin online program and mentorship like a hundred percent and mm -hmm. Created it from there and just started to scale it up with like kind of another type of like data. We did a webinar and just all the intention behind it was just to learn about the audience. It's like how much yeah. can we get the audience right now in the beginning? And then from mm -hmm. there, we can scale it up because the, the value is not going to change. It's just mm -hmm. about figuring out who that value is for. Yeah. And I'm sure like your messaging shifted as your program grew. Like that's what happens with all of mine is that you start with a beta program, minimal viable, and then you just learn so much from your clients and people that are actually paying you money, which is really the best. Uh, when you're looking for tribal language, that's the best person to get it from somebody who's actually brought their credit card out. It's not from uh, surveying your, your Facebook group or uh, your personal profile or just a random person off the street. It's people that actually pay you money. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of changed and morphed over time, right? Yeah, totally, totally. And that's such a great point. Um, I remember one of my mentors shared with me a while back uh, that people vote with their wallet, not their mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, that's, I was like, that's such a great point. They do. Yeah. If you think about our money, mm -hmm. we're, we're more attached to, even if it's a couple bucks, we're more attached to those dollars than we are to almost anything else. Like if, if somebody bumps into you on the street, you're like, oh, excuse me, cool. If somebody tries to reach into your pocket where your wallet is, mm -hmm. you know, I punch them in the jaw. <laughs> like, that's, like, that's how attached we are. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like $1 on you, it means a ton. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't think that I had the ability to make money online until I sold something on Shopify. Um, and I've talked about this over and over and over. I don't think I'd be um here today if like i didn't make that first sale on shopify where it clicked in my head that everything is like that is fucking possible somebody's willing to take out their credit card put their digits in and then pay me money online and it's like those small steps that you take and it's got to be a small one first um like starting with the beta program a smaller price and then build on top of that um but i kind of just got off track there that's actually that's actually right on track, man. It's right on track because with that beta program, on the sales calls for that beta program, when I was watching time, mm -hmm. I got so much information about what people were looking for. I got so much information about who they were, what they were going through, how they felt mm -hmm. about who they were, mm -hmm. and how they would feel if they got to this next this next level and all of this different stuff. And I just wrote all of it down and I recorded all these calls and I'll go back and I would study them after the fact. And yeah. that just so much information. And I mean, not even, not to mention working with them through the program, you know, yeah. that, all that kind of stuff. Like, that is just, I mean, that's just gold cool right there. Yeah. And that is such a better source to get the tribal language from rather than I've seen people uh, teaching their clients to do market research um, uh, uh, calls. Um, getting on a phone call, asking these like seven questions, eight questions, nine questions um, mm -hmm. around uh, like just, would you buy this? Would you buy it at this price point? And like people are inherently nice. Like they'll say, yeah, I would buy it for like a million dollars. And it's like those market research questions, like they're good, but you're going to get a lot of like false feedback from people um by doing market research questions if it's like a sales call though or if it's a what i call a strategy call that's that's what we help our clients with doing 30 minutes of just pure value giving to somebody and then getting a testimonial out of it mm -hmm. um if it's those types of calls it's a little bit different than the market research call which i don't really believe in but yeah yeah totally with you, totally with you. i mean people and, and, yeah, until they have a problem that they're talking about in like a serious conversation, they're mm -hmm. not being completely transparent and honest with you. Yeah, they just yeah. want to make you happy, kind of, and not be a dick or rub you the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But we were talking about before uh, we hopped on here about the human connection element of um, marketing and messaging. Um, and I thought that would be super important to bring up on this interview um, because it's it's been lost over the past 10 years or so with um, all the webinars and the paid ads and trying to automate everything. Um, and what what has your experience been with more intimate, high touch, um, going deeper with people instead of just automating everything in your own business? Mm -hmm. It's been the key to everything, really, because I, what I found is that people are annoyed by all the all the automations that are really inauthentic and just just um, clearly like this you know copy paste crap. Like you don't actually care about them. You're not actually interested. You're just trying to see if they'll respond to you and buy something from you, you mm -hmm. know? And it's, it's no different. It's really funny. It's no different from going to a mall and walking around and somebody comes up out of nowhere and says, hey, hey, you want to buy this? Hey, hey, you want to try this? We look at our phones and act like we're, you know, not paying attention. And, um, you know, we walk a little bit faster. And we're like, no, 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 we're good. And it could be the most valuable thing in the world to us in that, in that moment in time, but we don't really give a shit in that moment we're like we're like i don't know i don't even look mm -hmm. that's the same thing that we're doing we we're just talking about it before we moved on here that um the screen doesn't change anything we're still interacting with people in yep. the same we would any other time it doesn't matter so if you're reaching out to somebody on like linkedin or on facebook on direct messenger or or whatever and mm -hmm. that's your approach what can you expect right people are going to have the exact same reaction they're not going to respond they're going to they're going to give you some kind of crap that doesn't matter or, or ghost on you or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's been the key to everything for me is being able to do that and get genuine conversations started and real connections started. And that's where all the results come from. Especially yeah. yeah, I love it. Um, I haven't heard that analogy before. That's so true. Like just like an ad popping up uh, on your newsfeed is kind of like that that person coming up to you. Well, I guess it's kind of like a free sample, but an unwanted free sample at a mall. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> for ads, it's um for ads, it's not as big of an issue. It's more like when the person themselves, yeah, is is reaching out and just um and, and saying like, hey, you want to check this out? Or or hey, here's a PDF that I thought you might want to see. Thought it might be valuable for you without any kind of conversation or anything leading up to that. It's yeah, like, right. Just giving me stuff. Um. No, no, I don't, I don't want it. You're probably trying to sell me something. <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. And through Messenger, you can deepen the intimacy through voice notes and through videos, which I I don't see it being done enough. And then I see some people doing it at the wrong times, like people sending me videos of them when I don't even know them. Uh, I'm and like that is weird to me. <laughs> and and starting with a voice note too, I'm kind of like 50-50 on that. Like sometimes it, it's nice, but sometimes it's like, I haven't even looked at your profile yet. It's kind of mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. But as that conversation goes along, like deepening the intimacy with voice notes and with video is so fucking powerful. Oh my God, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if you've done this too, but it's really powerful when you um, when you have a follow up call booked with somebody. I've found so mm -hmm. if you have like if you have one call and you went through a bunch of stuff and then you're gonna have a follow up with them, mm -hmm. give, give them a voice note beforehand, and having that be relevant to something that you talked about or like a, an additional thought that you had is valuable based on that conversation. Say so, you know looking forward to talking to it, talking about it later, and you know going deeper with you on Monday. Or, or whatever, but just want to share that with you. Yes. That is, yep, that's so awesome. I, I don't really do too many sales calls anymore, um, but uh, doing a voice note before you hop on the call, like that'll sa save you so much time too um, because show up rates or no shows are a thing that wastes a shit ton of uh, salespeople's time. So mm -hmm. just having a simple voice note is is super powerful to get more people on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yep, totally. Yeah. One, one, another thing that I wanna share here for everybody, um, Loom videos. I love doing a little screen share of um, um, 
of uh, somebody's like personal profile, um, like something that relates to them. So the little still picture um, piques their interest and pops to them when you send it to them. And I just did a three minute one that converted into um, a deal for me the other day, um, just shooting over a loom video saying, hey, you could be doing this and we could take it to the next level inside of one of our programs. Um, are you interested in uh, 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 di diving deeper into that? He's like, send me over the pay link. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so Loom videos are super powerful too. I love that, I love yeah. that. I just started doing Loom videos in my, um, in, in my Facebook group and mm -hmm. using that to give people like really quick trainings because I didn't know how I could you know, share slides that people could read instead of just doing video training because I, I found that people get a lot of value from just having both there, you know, the visual aid and the yeah. other side. So I just figured out that Loom could help me do that, which is pretty <laughs> <laughs> Loom is fucking dope, 100%. Um, do you care if we hop into, uh, actually, first off, um, if you want to be a part of uh, Mark's Facebook group, Sell It With Stories, it's freaking bomb if you want to learn uh, these messaging and copy strategies. Hashtag story down below and we'll send you over the link. Um, free Facebook group, freaking awesome. Uh, and his copy is freaking fire. So if you just want to check that out, um, hashtag story down below and we'll send it over. Um, but hopping into um, LinkedIn, can you go a little bit over that strategy? Because I'm I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, sure, sure. Just, um, just in general, LinkedIn and your message. Uh, with generating leads, like what was the like uh, outreach methods? How did you get people to your profile? All of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So the, the first step that's so important for people when they're trying to use direct messenger, right, to get on, get these conversations going and get connections. Mm -hmm. you, you, we, we talked about the audience and all that stuff. But when it comes to the actual messaging itself, right, mm -hmm. messaging itself. You want to keep it as simple as possible, just like we were saying. It's no different from having a conversation with anybody that you might be interacting with. Right? So mm -hmm. instead of sending this long paragraph in as your outreach message to connect, send mm -hmm. a short one that just says hi, like you know, hi, how are you? <laughs> you know. So uh, yeah, I see it all the time. People send this, like connection messages, like hey, so I do this, I do this, this is my business, and maybe you'd be interested, and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or clearly just, you know, a, a boilerplate copy paste thing that they're saying to everybody and it's a paragraph I'm not going to read, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not how you introduce yourself to people in real life. So mm -hmm. the most high converting message that I've ever used on LinkedIn, and I want everybody to write this down, the most high converting message I've ever used on LinkedIn to get somebody to accept my connection request is just, hey, John, I see that you're doing some awesome things and um, it seems like we're pretty aligned. With um with how we do with how we operate, thought it might make sense to connect. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Two lines, and like some variation of that. Like I see you're doing awesome work, or I see like we have like we work doing similar things, or we're in a similar space. Thought it'd be great to connect if you're open to it. Mm. If you're open to it is key. If you're open to it, like mm. leave that space open for people to make that decision, have that choice mm. of like, yes, I want to be connected with this person or not. Ooh. And just that simple thing right there will make your connection rate jump through the roof. And it could be anywhere as high as like 35, 40, 45 percent of the people that you reach out to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. And that's that's the first step. That's awesome. I uh, So what I learned from Sarah Tempty uh, a few months back, one simple framework that's changed my communication is that people always want to feel like they're smart free and in control. And if you can check off those boxes with your messaging, with your first message there, like you are um, basically saying, hey, it's up to you, like making them feel in control, um, that that changes everything because our ego likes to take control away from people and mm -hmm. you can just give it back to them. You're gonna get a, a, a better conversion rate there. So mm -hmm. I freaking love that. And it, it's uh, what you brought up earlier in that point was um, that it's that's how somebody would introduce themselves, like in person, saying, mm -hmm. hey, this is basically this is why I'm talking to you right now, explaining. Um, 
hey, I saw that you had uh, uh, oh, I, I, brown shoes. I love brown shoes or something like that. Giving yeah, yeah. some stupid <laughs> fucking reason works really, really well. Uh -huh. um, and I, I love that you added that to your first message as well. So from there, how do you, how do you transition? How do you, how, where do you go from there? So it's, so it's interesting. You stick with the, you stick with the same, the same process like we would in, in real life. You know, so somebody's going to say, yeah, sure. Great to connect. Mm -hmm. And then now what's the, what's the next step? Like I imagine you're at a networking event or you're at a, at like a, a dinner with a bunch of people and you meet some, meet some new people, right? What's the next step? You're going to tell them a little bit more about what you, what you do, who you are, but you're not going to ramble and, and, <laughs> and, and, and you know, give them all this, all this crap. You're just going to really short, shortly and like succinctly tell them this is what I'm about. Mm -hmm. So the next message that I usually send is usually something like, like, Hey, it's great. To, hey, it's great to connect. Hey, just um, to quickly introduce myself or just a quick background on me is my value statement. I help this audience solve this problem, get to this result with, um, with something that I call my proprietary method. And which is just my, my secret sauce, my process, my method that I use to get that result. And, and from there, it depends on what my intention is. You know, if I want to get them onto a phone call, I might just ask them a simple question. Like, like I don't know if that's something that you would need, but can you tell me, is that, <laughs> you know, is that something that you've thought about before? I'm curious. Or, mm -hmm. or, um, or I'm curious, do you need any help with that? No? If not, that's totally okay. If told, yeah. Not that's totally okay, just curious. Um, mm -hmm. it's so great to be connected here on LinkedIn. Like I have no agenda. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, Hey, just so you know more about me, this is what I do in one line. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, it seems like this is your type of deal. Um, do you need help with anything like this? And mm -hmm. if that's totally okay, I'm just happy to be connected here on LinkedIn and, you know, talk to you later. <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many people respond to that and say, uh, actually, yeah. Um, that sounds mm -hmm. super interesting. If, if you're, you know, you're in the audience and your and your message and what you do, right? Mm -hmm. it, God, yes, like that's something that I, I'm definitely interested in hearing more about. What would the next steps be? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome, and they still feel in control. Um, and on top of that, one line that I like to use is, um, "Are you open to exploring that?" Like that would be a little bit further down the rabbit's hole, but it's still a direct question that keeps them in control of. Mm -hmm your choice. Are you open to exploring that? Mm -hmm. um, so I love that. And on top of that, I'm sure when you're sending these messages, you have an optimized profile because people are bound to creep on your LinkedIn profile if you're messaging them there. Yeah. Um, what are some quick tips for people to um, optimize their LinkedIn profile? So so two things. And I see a lot of people are, are commenting hashtag story. It's awesome. It's awesome. I can see you in the group commenting. And, um, and that, that applies to LinkedIn also storytelling. So um, I just mentioned the value statement, right? And understanding exactly what that one liner statement is, you can really show people right away that this is the result you help people get and, and or the problem you help them solve. And if there's a method that you have to get that done, because, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Most people are selling something that other people are selling. And it's yeah. just a, a unique twist on whatever that might be, you know? So you have to you have to do it more than ever now to help you stand apart. Give your process something that's going to be unique, right? Mm -hmm. Well, well, once you have that as like your LinkedIn headline, right, and it's very, very clear, so people can see that right away. Then it's about structuring your summary in a story form if you want them to actually read it. So mm -hmm. like, the biggest mistake that I see people making on their LinkedIn summary is they have just their resume or they're talking just like all about them, all about themselves and what they've done and, and all of that. And it's not focused on the audience themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not focused on the client and what they're going through, what their experience is like mm -hmm. and, and what their problems are. And that, that whole that journey that we want to lead people through mm -hmm. you know, on their LinkedIn summary. And that's what makes people read it. Nobody's going to read, you know, a big paragraph about you just talking about yourself. And talking about yourself, like nobody really cares, especially a stranger, right? That you haven't talked to yet. Yeah, like yeah. you're still, you're still a stranger, even though you're connected on LinkedIn. Doesn't mean you're friends. <laughs> you know, so yeah. uh, 
So if you can put story elements into your profile in your summary to explain what you do, then you can get somebody to read the whole thing and even take action. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I love it, love it, love it. Uh, guys, if you have any questions around LinkedIn, messaging, um, copywriting, um, really just attracting your ideal client, drop it down below. But Mark, if you're open to it, um, I think we'll do some profile and Facebook group audits um, and you can help out with the messaging and copywriting portion if you're open for that. Yeah, let's do it, man, let's do it. Awesome, I don't know how well it's gonna work, we have to like, triple screen it up here using BeLive, but we'll we'll see what we can do. How's that a roll? Nikos, Leah, Pat, great seeing you guys. Um, let's go down. All right. So I gotta flip it around here. see if this will work if you guys have enjoyed this so far hit that heart button hit that like button we love your faces more if you do that i don't know how it's so <laughs> small let's see if we can make it any bigger no that just makes my stupid face bigger um, um does that work i like this the best but you can't see it too well if you guys want to expand your screen probably on mobile this sucks uh, but we're going to go with it. Mark, yeah, if flip it around here. Can you see the screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, cool. So we'll dive into here. Uh, this is Corey, uh, Corey's Facebook group. Um, and let's see how many people you have in this bad boy. Over 2,000. Um, boop, 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 boop. Unlimited Life Academy, Launchpad for Experts, Coaches, and Course Creators. Awesome. So um, with the name, solid. Um, Launchpad for Expert Coaches and Course Creators. Um, messaging is fucking everything. Um, like you're messaging to somebody who is just starting out. And if people are just starting out, typically don't have the uh, as much money so as you grow as you evolve you got to think about like who you're messaging to and you've kind of just got to accept that the people that are coming into your group aren't going to be the richest people in the world and um I'd, I'd love to hear your definition of an ideal client mark but um i find it to be the the overlap between um somebody you love working with um somebody that you can produce results for and somebody that can pay you money um, essentially. Um, and here, um, if you get the masses in here, hell yeah, like you're going to make a pretty penny. Um, just know that the people that are coming into your group are just starting out. So they're probably not going to have a shit ton of money uh, to spend or extra money to spend. But this is a fantastic first Facebook group and already crushing it with two, over 2000 people, Corey. Um, but, uh, uh, but Mark, what's, what's your definition of like an ideal client? You know, it's really the it's really the same thing. Like those are the three buckets that I'm always thinking about. Because I mean, if, if you're with people that don't you don't like working with, then you're going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. And if you're with people who can't pay, then you're not going to grow your business, and you're and you're going to be miserable also. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, because now you're doing all this work for free, and that's not like, money is part of you growing your business, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and then of course, you know, you have a purpose of what you're doing. You want to make an impact. You want to help people get a result. And if you can't do that, well, then your business is going to suffer because you won't get testimonials. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be thrilled about what you're doing because you're not really making that impact you want to make. You know, yeah. so those are the three buckets that I always think about too. I think those, I think that's the core. Love it. Um, dude, I actually might have a way where, boom. Oh, there we go. Oh, genius. Guys, can you still hear us? I just took off the video. If uh, if you can hear us, give me a give me a thumbs up, a like or something like that. I don't know. Okay, we're good. Nikos gave us a like. Awesome. Yes. yes. Um awesome. So this works better. We're going to dive into this Facebook group and you can see everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. 
Awesome. So the um, welcome video, always have a welcome video. What it does is it shows people um, that your group is engaged. You keep it at the top and people are like, oh, people are engaging at this in this group. So and it gets to show off, uh, show you off. Typically, I advise that it's three to five minutes. Um, it's not a longer video. Um, and uh, this is solid, Corey. Um, I see you're doing a challenge, which is awesome. That boosts engagement. Um, I don't really advise challenges to convert, like um, doing a five-day challenge to convert or a seven-day challenge to convert. However, it is really, really good for getting your engagement back up in a Facebook group. Um, but this is great. If you have anything that you would pick out with a uh, copy or anything like that, um, Mark, feel free to jump in here. Uh, buh, buh, buh. What's up, Unlimited Lifers? Um, cool, I love it. Um, I would, so in a Facebook group, we don't really call anybody in our Facebook group anything. I get that that's the, uh, the click funnels way of doing it, like funnel hackers and that sort of stuff. Um, and it is good for building culture. However, um, it's better to build that culture around people who have already bought your stuff. So with a free Facebook group, I actually wouldn't call them anything. They're inside a free Facebook group. And starting with the line of like, hey, X name, um, it, it doesn't pop. It doesn't bring the reader in. When you're scrolling on um, your newsfeed, it's not gonna draw you in. And your first two lines are the most important uh, when, uh, when you're posting on Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's such a, such a great point, man. I was, um, I was thinking the same thing. And uh, something that I've actually found and tested is, um, is that if you use just, hey, team, or something like that, it, it can have a similar effect that you're looking for with naming, you know, the, um, naming the, uh, the the community, right? But you're not you're not really going all the way, <laughs> you know. You're, you're making them feel like you're, they're more part of the family, more part of the group, and you know, it's not just they're not just like you know one person. They're part of something bigger. And I found that people resonate with that a lot in like a, on like a subconscious level of just wanting to be a part of something collective and not just a lone wolf. Um, yeah. Like that's that's as far as I've gone with that, um, unless they're a part of a paying community. But uh, it's, it's worked pretty well. Yeah, team or fam, I'm totally yeah. with you on that. Totally. Um, yeah. So what I see here is a lot of people uh, doing the challenge, which is awesome inside of a free group. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, one thing I would advise is more interviews. Interviews just crush um, and. Uh, uh, the one of the best things that you can do in your group is have like this staple piece of content that is like your best stuff. Like that is really, really good. That creates raving fans around what you do by just like doing a 45 minute presentation that you prepped for. That's just really freaking good. Like for me, the staple piece of content is the um, group, uh, group growth and engagement five day challenge inside the units. If you guys haven't checked it out, check that out there. But that's what creates the raving fans inside of the Facebook group because I give so much value away uh, inside of inside of that. And I'm not seeing that staple piece of content that's like really really powerful inside of your Facebook group. I think that would help out a lot. Um, and, and also more interviews. I'm not seeing really any interviews and interview there's maybe one um but those go a long long way um anything you would add mark i know i'm kind of putting you on the spot uh with the branding with the marketing with the or um with the messaging with the copywriting mm -hmm. yeah so i mean one thing that i notice is that when i look at the banner i don't know who it's for right away you know, like I don't know what the I see the bullet points, right? Make it pop. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the I don't have that you know language that's going to tell me exactly what I'm learning when I come in here, except for the bullet points. So I see you know join today, unlimited life academy, and I have these different things that are that are in here, but it doesn't say you will learn this or or it's not specific, right? It's not like yeah. what, 
you know, it's, it's just um, it's just kind of like these little bullet points and not a description of something that I'm doing actively. Like you want to engage people and make it really clear what they're getting into when they when they join this thing, even if it's a free Facebook group. I love that you pointed that out because if you just put experts, coaches, and course creators inside of the banner and made it pop a little bit more, it mm -hmm. would way, 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 way more effective um, mm -hmm. with um, getting more people into his free community. So that that's a good freaking point. Also, um, also I'm curious to, to, to hear your thoughts on this, dude, is um, when you join a Facebook group, what's the first thing you notice? Is it the, the, is it the link to join the name of the group or is it the image, the banner image when it comes up in the sidebar here? Banner all day. Like I'm not, my eyes don't go to um, the name at all. Yeah. Me so, too. Me too. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's um, why I want to prioritize that banner <clears throat> always um, for any group is you know, take that thing that's going to catch people's eyes and show them exactly what they're doing. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, we're going to go on to Phil's Facebook group. Um, the milkshake method. Um, great IP there. Um, I think, yeah, since this is if this was for restaurant owners, I would say the the background's good. Um, since this is more for marketers, I would say change the banner to be more towards marketers um, and what what they want and the end benefit. Mm -hmm. um, so like, don't sell the plane, sell the destination, right? Um, mm -hmm. So this is good. You can still talk about restaurant marketing uh, and, and um, winning branding and all that but I would make it more towards the end destination and not the vehicle. Uh, totally agree with you there, man. Actually, um, I'm gonna add something to the image also is, um, is you're trying to attract people to your group, right? You want more members to join. And one of the most powerful things you can do to attract people is to show them a reflection of themselves in some kind of a way. And mm -hmm. that's, that'll drag people in. They, they see that reflection of themselves in, in whatever it might be, whether it's like where they are now or where they're trying to go or, or, or something, right? So if it's for marketers and people in business and everything like that, it'd be, it'd be really powerful if you could show them some kind of an image that, that they could see oh, like something business related or life related or where they're trying to go, something that connects to you know, how, they, how they feel and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. I love that. I would, I would, I would love. I see a picture in my head of like a, a just a an entrepreneur drinking a milkshake in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah>. not bad. <laughs> um, awesome. Welcome video on point. Got engagement there. I always like making three of the reactions pop up. So if anybody sees me, like give them a wow on like um, maybe a sad post or something. It's because I want your your post to pop more with three uh, reactions, just heads up on that. Um, so this is cool. Like there are a lot of people posting in your group that are not you, um, which is fantastic. Um, this looks like one of your staple pieces of content because you've got amazing, amazing engagement here. So that is awesome. And you're doing interviews. Um, posted with Phil's approval. Awesome. Yeah, Phil. Interviews, great, great, great. Um, I don't see too much around um, creating community in here as in, hey, let's um, uh, like a LinkedIn follow train or an Instagram follow train. Let's like connect outside of this, that sort of thing um, to build community or saying, hey, drop a link to your website so we can check out your website. Those work really well because people love talking about themselves and showing things off. And Phil, I know you're inside the group growth monetization blueprint. Um, I believe that's all in module two. Um, so check out those, those posts. Um, and what we're trying to do inside of a Facebook group is create that tribe feel that community feel, which will convert into more sales. So just a, uh, just do more of those posts, but 
your engagement looks great. I mean, getting 80 reactions on your Facebook Live uh, just a couple months ago is, is perfect. Um, anything you would add, Mark? Anything that you see? Yeah, first, Phil, this is awesome. This is really great. Um, I would add just more story posts. That's something I'm not seeing right now uh, very much is um, is, the st is the story post because those are going to get people to engage off the charts and really connect with um, with you and your journey, your experience, and just let you document things even even you know more so than you are right now. It seems. Um, but stories. I mean, Andrew, like you, I know that you and I connect with this on uh, a lot. Is the is the story aspect of things when it comes to sharing your content, right? Yeah, hundred um, percent. And little plug here: if you want to learn more about story posts and uh, crush those, join Mark's group. Sell it with stories. If you want the link to that, hashtag story down below, and we'll send you over the link to his free Facebook group. Love it. Are you still there, Mark? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. I'm still here. And, <laughs> yeah, we talk a lot about the story posts and and how to and how to do those and and how to do different kinds even because there's so many different ways you can share your story or share a story to um, you know connect with people and deliver value. It's it's kind of unreal how many ways you can do it. It's more than just what your life experience has been. There's so many other ways you can do it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, so I'm not in this Facebook group, but this is a good uh, uh, good thing to go through, the first three questions. So Morgan, I love your first three questions. Um, this is what I teach. Basically, where do you wanna go? Where are your, what are your goals? Um, I always have a timeline. So where do you wanna be in three months? Where do you wanna be in 12 months? Kind of being more specific, um, but this is great. Where do you wanna go? And what's holding you back? What challenges are you facing? Um, this is amazing, amazing intel. I see a lot of people waste their first three questions on like, do you promise not to spam the group? Like a spammer is going to spam. <laughs> like yeah. that's not holding anybody back. But if you can get uh, get this intel on people joining your group, where are you at? Where do you want to go? And then you can, I have an additional question. Do you want a member of our team to reach out on that? Um, then uh, you can engage inside Messenger. Hey, I saw your your feedback. I think I, we could really help. Are you open to hopping on a 15 minute call and exploring that today? Like, boom, like, I think I can help. Are you open to exploring that on a short call? Boom, and get them on a call. Or you can go deeper with them in Messenger. It's one of the best ways to generate leads and sales is through your first two questions here. Um, and then your third question, what would you love to learn the most uh, about from me. Cool. That's great. That gives you intel on like what your content should be. If you're struggling with creating content or what it should be around, this is a solid question. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a lead magnet or something, I would capture uh, an email down here. Drop your email if you want this thing um, and then build your email list and use group convert to move somebody or move that email address to your email autoresponder. If you just Google group convert, you'll find it. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Hope that's such a game changer. It's such a game changer because you, you get this massive list of responses from your audience about what they want, what their problems are, what they're looking for. It's just such invaluable intel for, um, for you. Anyways, it's crazy. Agreed. Um, and this is actually really impressive. Like, Morgan, you're doing great. This is a very competitive niche um, and having over a thousand people in your group, I don't know what the engagement is like. It's looking good. Um, and one thing I would add, I would have a picture of a, a of you here. Um, and that, that way you're seeing more of the authority. You got your name here, but I always like putting my face in the banner. Um, being seen more as authority, it's more welcoming seeing somebody's face. So that's one thing that I would change up on your banner. And actually, I'll I'll add to that is if you can if you can have a face there instead of the back of um of somebody's head. Uh, so if if it's you, that's the best. But definitely make sure your face is showing because that'll make people connect with you way more. Um, you know, just that that eye contact or just facial features draws us in so much more. Mm hmm. All right. I am trying to find another Facebook group that I'm a part of. 
a group where we pre pretend to be baby boomers. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, let's see, Joanne, did I join your group from last time? I'll be a breastfeeding mom. I'm planning <laughs> a due date. Uh, oh no, Did wait, is she here and did she just accept me? Oh, I don't know why that went away. That's so funny. Um, let's see if I'm in this Facebook group. No, I need to join my Facebook groups, it look, looks like. All right, cool. I've actually um, have a hard stop here at 12. So we'll wrap things up here. Awesome. Um, guys, if you, uh, if you want to get better at storytelling, messaging, copywriting, um, all of that good stuff, uh, join Mark's group, um, hashtag story down below, and we'll send you over the link uh, to his free Facebook group. Um, just massive, massive value bombs being dropped there every single day. Um, and uh, yeah, do it. And uh, if you want, um, and uh, Mark, thank you so, so much uh, for being here, dude. Um, this was awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. And everybody's welcome in the group. We're talking about all this kind of stuff on every platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, email, and you know, a lot of guest experts coming in to talk about this stuff too. And um, it's just a, just a great place to be in. You know, I can't wait to see you guys there. Hashtag story if you want to join. Awesome. Thanks so much, buddy. Oh yeah, thanks for having me, man. Talk to you soon.